web developer a self-taught web developer which means that anything that i know i've had to teach myself and any research that went into figuring out what i needed to learn has been all on me i have spent weeks and months trying to teach myself new technologies i've purchased books i've watched tutorials i've purchased courses some of them i stopped right in the middle of because they leave me more confused than i already was so after coming to this realization i decided to challenge myself to find new ways to learn coding languages and it's almost like the coding universe heard me because I heard the best piece of advice I could have ever heard and that was to read the documentation. If you watched my last video where I spoke about the opportunity that I got to interview with Google for a software developer position, I have it in the cards above and in the description box below in case you missed it. I mentioned in that video that I finally figured out what I wanna do in the tech industry and this will require that I continue my JavaScript learning as well as learning new technologies like Blender, Spline, 3JS to learn more about the WebGL world and React.js. I just completed my first project where I implemented my first 3D model onto a web app using Vue and Beautify. And throughout this process, there were a lot of things I didn't know, a lot of errors thrown, but I found that the biggest help that I received during this process was from reading the Spline and Vue documentation that and Stack Overflow, which let's be honest, Stack Overflow is kind of like its own documentation in itself. So I wanted to give you a few reasons why going forward, watching tutorials will be my last option when it comes to choosing a resource while I'm learning new technologies. But before we get into that, my name is Jess. I make videos about tech, self-learning, and self-improvement. So if that sounds like anything you're interested in, please consider subscribing to this channel. We are almost at 4K. Thank you guys so much for your support. And if you find anything helpful in this video, please consider liking the video so that it helps the algorithm. And it also helps me know what to provide in the future and without further ado let's get back to today's topic by reading the documentation i was able to gain a deeper knowledge of how the components work opposed to watching a tutorial where everything is going so fast i'm trying to keep up with the instructor and get my project to run exactly how their project is working and i found that this is probably a big reason why i don't do well with courses because i am trying to keep up with what they're saying i'm trying to take notes i'm trying to code and it just doesn't work for my learning style another reason i've decided to go straight to the documentation is because it is literally the blueprint for the language so even if i don't understand the syntax completely i get an idea of what the structure of the code should look like so when i go to resources like stack overflow or w3 schools i'm able to better pinpoint what it is that i'm looking for because i've already seen some sort of example by reading the documentation i've been able to retain the information a lot better as well because i'm reading it opposed to me only hearing the information and it allows me to create different resources for myself like files and folders and bookmarks because i have these articles or different things that i can actually screenshot opposed to having to remember where i actually heard something because that can get a little tricky when you need to go back to reference something in the future i was always told that the best way to learn how to code is by doing so taking what you're learning about these coding languages and applying them to your own projects breaking your projects breaking your code learning how to fix it again and honestly i was always afraid to do this i was always afraid to go out and start my own projects because i was always in my own head like with everything else like where will I start and how will I know how to apply this to my own project? How will I know how to find the answer? And the thing is, you won't. <laughs> like, you won't know right at the beginning, but you have to do it anyway because this helps you practice computational thinking, which ultimately makes you a better programmer. And I've said this before, but you have to start learning how to think like the computer. How can I take this problem and create a solution that the computer will understand and give the best result for whoever the client is or if it's just for yourself? Finally breaking down and creating a project where I solely use documentation and use things like tutorials as a backup resource was easily the best thing that I could have done on my entire coding journey. And this may be common sense to some people where it's like, oh girl, duh, like read the documentation, that's what it's there for. But honestly, it's not that common to a lot of people. And especially if you're like me and you're on your self-taught route, you may not think to go to the documentation first. I've heard people talk about going to documentation, but I feel like the easier thing to do when you don't know what to do is to start with a tutorial or a course, but try to challenge yourself to read the documentation first and see how much knowledge you can pick up about the language before you even jump into your first tutorial. I'm not telling you not to watch tutorials at all because trust me, I still will and I feel like there's still a lot of value in tutorials. But I think this is where people talk about not getting stuck in tutorial hell because at some point you do have to stop watching the tutorials because that's all you'll do. You'll just be creating other people's projects. And honestly, I can speak for myself. A lot of times you may leave those tutorials not even really knowing anything because 
you're so stressed out about trying to get it to work how the person who's giving the tutorials is working or you know there's so many other factors that play into it so just challenge yourself to read the documentation first so this project that i keep talking about in this video was super simple but it was a really great beginner way to learn how to take a 3d model and implement it into a web app and i gained a lot of knowledge i really learned a lot from that small simple project i was able to use a new strategy for planning designing and developing the project and I was able to learn a new framework. I didn't think to record the process of me creating this project because I was so focused on just getting it done and really just learning as much as I could throughout the process and retaining that knowledge. So I thought my next video could be me sharing with you guys the project, but also showing you guys the planning and design development process that I used. And another big reason that I wanted to share the project with you guys is because I recently had an interview for a web developer role and this is the project that I took with me to my interview because if you guys have been following me and listening to my videos, you know that I was previously working for a position that was in the government space. So I had nothing to show them in this interview because I can't talk about the things that I was working on there. And I don't know if it was the project or just me, but I ended up getting the job. So I thought it would be really fun to show you guys how simple this project was, but I was able to speak to it. And yeah, I'm so excited about this new role. Hopefully I can talk more about it in future videos. I start um, this Tuesday, today is Sunday. So I start on Tuesday. So I really honestly don't know too much about what I'm gonna be able to talk about as far as like what I work on, obviously without talking about the actual things that we're working on, but I'm hoping to be a little bit more, be able to share a little bit more about my experience in working in this role than I was in my previous one. Also, since I'm no longer working in the role that I was in in the government space, I thought it would be cool to do a video where I kind of talk about my experience with my first web developer position as a self-taught web developer. So if you have any questions about my experience, be sure to leave them in the comments below. And if you don't want to leave them in the comments, you can follow me on Instagram and send me a message there because I do check my messages. And I'll try to collect some questions and maybe do a Q&A about my first tech position. And I'll try my best to answer the questions to the best of my ability because that was a government position and I ain't trying to get in trouble even though I don't work there anymore. <laughs> I'm not trying to be in trouble with them. So yeah, let me know if you have any questions and I will do my best to put that video together for you. I think that's gonna do it for this video, guys. Thank you so very much for making it to this point in the video. Again, if you found this helpful at all, be sure to like the video so that the algorithm knows and also it lets me know what to make for you guys in the future. Um, if you have any suggestions on the best ways you've been learning how to code, leave them in the comments below because our community reads those comments and you guys have been so helpful. I tell you guys this all the time, but I truly appreciate you and again, my name is Jess. I make videos about tech, self-improvement, and self-learning. So if that's something you're into, consider subscribing. We're almost at 4K. Let's get us to 4K. And thank you guys for everything. I will see you in the next video.